In the previous two videos, I baffled and befuddled you with dubious proofs. With all the concision of a windbag, I walked you through the acoustic analysis for drunks worksheet. Here, dear watcher, I pull back the hymen of mystery and show you the myriad mistakes I made when treating this space. What you will see are more measurements. Yes, more measurements comparing things such as panel gaps and blindly following internet advice versus actually measuring things. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Michael Carrillo, AKA Hexpa. Welcome to my channel. I made a PDF for this video series called Acoustic Analysis for Drunks. Click the link in the description to download it. Let's get into some examples of what I did to improve my room. Obviously I wasn't born knowing this stuff and this room is where I did a lot of experimentation. This image is before and after I brought in the super trunks. I had them pulled out very far into the room attempting to target the quarter wavelength of my axial modes. If you don't know, quarter wavelength is the ideal place for frictional absorbers, but it's usually impractical. When the room is empty, you can try stuff like this. You can see that despite the chunks not being reflection free zone ones, they still helped with SPL nulls. Naturally, they help with decay times and widen the queue of resonances, yet more absorption and improvement is needed. This image has the before response, the quarter wavelength one, and the one where I placed the chunks all the way in the corners. I would say overall the response is worse. The dark blue is 140 milliseconds and the light blue is 160 milliseconds. You can see that with them shoved into the corner, the decay doesn't continue as much. Since we want a progressive decay, it's clear that for this room, some kind of gap is better. The SPL is also more regular with a gap, although at this point, I'm not as focused on that. Since the quarter wavelength gap was better, but impractical, I used a two foot gap as a compromise. This is pretty much a one X gap since I used 23 inch diagonally cut fluffy insulation bats for my chunks. We still get a progressive decay, so that's good. The rightmost image is with the two foot chunk gap and a repositioned sub and listening position. This drastically improves low end SPL below 63 Hertz. The decay changes in that bandwidth at a ratio other than one to one, which may be due to the walls being lossy below a certain cutoff. We know the nulled bandwidth in the 180 Hertz range is from speaker boundary interference and can be improved with absorption on the contributing surfaces. At this point, I still hadn't brought in any of my rigid panels. These next images show the previous responses and also one with the rigid panels in the room with no particular arrangement. I think they were wrapped in plastic to be units of either 8, 12, or possibly 16 inch thickness. The resulting response is showing that even without analysis and placement optimization, just bringing absorption into the room will help greatly. We're getting about five decibels more decay at 65 Hertz, which is a problem range in this room. Don't let people tell you that frictional absorbers don't work below 125 Hertz. While this response is encouraging, I knew I could do better via placement, so I continued to try more arrangements. One consideration you have to make when installing panels is how much of a gap to use. Gapping absorbers gives better low end response with a compromise in the lower mids. However, if you gap too much, you end up with what I'd call an unsupported response. It just absorbs the targeted low frequency a tiny bit more, but works less well higher up. The decay didn't change much in this example. It's just one panel, but the SPL is definitely worse. So I went with a one X gap. In fact, I now generally recommend 1x gaps with parallel panels and a 4x with angling where appropriate like vertical walls. This image shows the difference between blindly following advice online versus trying things out for yourself. Every room is a little different. Best practices should be your starting place, but not an excuse or crutch. Always measure your room and experiment before calling it quits or hire someone who will do these things like me for $1,000 an hour. The internet advice image is with the panels arranged one way and the 20 spread was the response of a random measurement when my panels were just spread out. The panels were all leaning against the wall, none doubled up. And after much trial and error, that ended up being the best result I'd gotten so far. This is the same number of panels. Seeing a result like this is what made me realize that placement matters more than I was led to believe. Since sound doesn't know up or down, I figured I could vertically mirror the leaning panels from the ceiling and that's what I settled on. So this is just comparing before, blind following, and analyzing. The response on the right is not perfect, I acknowledge that. However, 
I used six of my panels to create a dead recording zone instead of making the perfect listening position response. A worthy trade-off. I still meet my targets of plus or minus 10 decibels SPL and 20 decibels of decay within 150 milliseconds above 63 hertz. More panels strategically placed and the decay would have been even prettier. Regardless, you can see that you're gonna get the majority of benefit just by introducing absorption. Nerding out isn't for everyone. But hopefully this gives you an indication of what's possible if you apply your brain. This slide shows the cover of Home Acoustics Magazine. As if you can see that my desk is forward, so my listening position is near 38% of the room's length. The vape is prominently placed because it makes me cool. You can see in the center image the mirror angled sidewall panels and the rear of my recording zone, which also serves to dampen the resonance of the short wall. There you can also see the cloud panels with a 1x gap at my listening position and recording zone. The super chunks are pulled out two feet, a 1x gap and have an additional panel leaning against the corner behind them. With more time and money, the first place I'd probably put panels is behind the chunks and speakers where the walls are bare. For what it's worth, the panels are angled from a 4x to 0x gap, though I'm not sure if I compared with a 1x to 0x gap or other angle. I should mention that the pile of blankets in the bottom right of the center image actually helped the decay times a bit, and yes, placement mattered. Another thing I can tell you is that having the doors open also helps. Again, no wall, no resonance. The third image shows a close-up of where I'd try placing more panels if I could. This final image shows my recording zone. If you want to make one, put it in a corner with four feet of absorption in every direction. Luckily, mine dovetailed into my other treatment efforts somewhat. My super chunks have FRK affixed to the top and bottom two feet while the center four foot area is bare. This is so I can use it for other things like this. FRK makes absorbers work better at low frequencies, but reflects above one kilohertz if you didn't know. The right image shows a quarter wavelength gap for the mini wall resonance. Ideally, I'd use a thicker panel, but hey, use what you got. Note the angled panel behind the super chunk on the sidewall. That also measured as an improvement. Measure everything. That wraps up virtually everything you need to know about my room. Ethan Weiner mostly summarizes what you need to know for acoustic treatment as more is better. And he's mostly right. I'd like to augment that sentiment by saying, if you have the time, do the <coughs> No, seriously, it's a logic train. No treatment is bad. You can get the majority of benefit just by adding some treatment. Or you can use your brain power to maximize the effectiveness of your treatment efforts. And of course, money solves all. Obviously, you could always just try making your room totally dead. That's an option. Some people like a little bit of liveness. It opens up the sound stage. In that case, you could just add diffusion between four and eight kilohertz. But if you're not made of money, then using these techniques, you'll be able to squeeze the most out of your efforts. And you will do that by long and lonely nights. But hey, at least your acoustics won't suck. I hope this helped. Make sure to download my thinly veiled email list collection bait. This, in my opinion, is a very valuable resource I'm offering. I'm not even selling anything right now, so you can't lose. Click the link in the description and just download it. If you immediately unsubscribe, no big deal. Just send me a check for a million dollars. Peace.